function. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fred Donovan. I am a researcher and a professor at a university in Nebraska, in Mountain. And um, show of hands. Uh, being a research, being a teacher, I always like to ask questions, so I might do that. Um, how many people have uh, uh, used Raspberry Pi? As I suspected. Excellent. <laughs> So as you know, uh, small form factors, well, they're pretty awesome. You know, of course, uh, um, Apple came out with their neat little uh, uh, computers that, you know, about that big. But uh, ultra small form factors like Raspberry, raspberry Pi are, uh, um, well, they're extremely useful. Now, of course, you can make some fun things for your kids. You can put uh, uh, neat little games on them and, and uh, but Minecraft and they can go to town with their friends and, and log them into their network and, and just have a lot of fun with it, which I do too. Not for me, for my kids, by the way. But uh, um, there's so much more that you can do res with uh, a Raspberry Pi implementation. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Um, and of course, you know, there's not just Raspberry Pi, right? There's Beagle Boards. China came out with a new one. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. I wouldn't be able to pronounce the name of it, but it's about half the price of what a Raspberry Pi is, and it's a lot faster, greater processing speed. But there are things that you can do with processing speed uh, that uh, we've done uh, in our implementations of uh, HBox and QBox. So the HBox um, is, well, H stands for hacking, of course. And so I know that uh, uh, somebody had come out with a uh, Metasploit uh, framework that they put on a, uh, a Raspberry Pi box. Um, and that's great. And there's so many other tools that you can put on there as well. And so, uh, so I did that. Let's talk about, oh, this is me, professor, for uh, 14 years I was a uh, what I call an ex executive consultant, which really is essentially just an independent consultant, but that looks pretty good, right? And uh, I had a, a, a company called Attack Logic, and essentially we worked with both uh, public and private organizations, so both uh, corporations and uh, uh, governments in the United States. And I've been a researcher for, for a long time. I spent three years at a university, um, it's been 10 years now, uh, doing some research on uh, InfoSec and, and back in the early days of, of hacking and that was a lot of fun and it's, it's really grown since. Um, and I don't hide that I enjoy defense but I prefer offense. So I like to hack, all right? And if I had my way I'd probably tell a lot of people to hack back but uh, you know, don't take my word on that. That's probably not always a good idea. There's implications to that. So there it is. I think we all know what it is. Okay, that's in my talk. No, um, Raspberry Pi. We've all had it. There's a lot of great things on it. Uh, uh, I mean, you put uh, your uh, um, uh, processing power in this little tiny, little tiny box. And essentially, uh, does anybody know this song? Anybody know how to sing that song? Yeah, I see a few. You do, Mike. My Großmutter is von Deutschland und sie, sie uh, uh, singen das zu mich. Aber wir eine kleine, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Kein Schwein. <laughs> um, so challenges. So yes, a kid can do it, but there's so much more to it, right? So it's growing in its ability. And there are so many more things that you can do with Raspberry Pi or other things like that. So it's no longer a lab curiosity. And really, the simplicity of, of putting something like Minecraft or something should be out the door. All those server racks that we have, the MC racks with the servers and stuff, I mean, I can envision it, and I bet you can too. Eventually, all that stuff's going to be gone. There's no reason to do that. All of the power that it takes to run those, the heat that's, that's put out, we don't necessarily have to have that anymore. So what you get now is you minimize CPU cycles and you can do some business implementations uh, with Raspberry Pi um, rather than just fun little games. But 
frankly, that takes an engineer. I mean, that takes uh, considerable skills and perhaps a set of engineers. And uh, um, you know, I have students, so that's okay. But uh, um, I think there's a lot of brilliant engineers out here that I already know, and I bet a lot of you others are as well. Um, so here's some of the things that, that we did. Um, as you know, Raspberry Pi and the other small form, ultra small form factors are using a, a flash drive. And so uh, if you partition a file, uh, if, you, if you have the ability to partition a file, you can partition RAM in there, speed up, your, uh, uh, speed up the uh, out of the box design. And uh, there's a way that uh, you can convert uh, just a GPU to a RISC CPU. It's not, uh, it, it makes it much more quick. And certainly when you're doing this for things like Nagios uh, and um, other tools like I've done it, um, you really need something like that. So processing power can be increased significantly. Uh, the, Q-bo the, the Q-Box is, uh, well, it's an infrastructure monitoring device. Here's some fun little parts, but I, I wanna point out a couple things. Eight watts full load. If you go back to what I said about servers, the, the EMC racks and, and what we have, those put out I don't know, 500 watts each server. I don't know. They, they put out a lot of energy. So the money that corporations spend with, uh, with just having a server plugged in is significant, you know, when you multiply it by months and years and what have you. Um, there's no fan. There's no moving parts. I mean, this is, this is my little box, but uh, uh, essentially it's it's very cool on, on the, on the uh, scheme of, uh, of output. It doesn't get hot much, obviously there. That's what it operates at. And uh, of course, you can put Wi-Fi on there as well. So that's just a look at the uh, um, Q-Box. So here's what, what, uh, what we decided to do. Nagios, any Nagios users out there? Yeah, OK, thought so. All right, so we put Nagios in there. Um, and of course, Inconf, Inconf is in there as well um, to uh, the, the graphical user interface to modify Nagios. Uh, Snort, and now, uh, is it called Snorty? Because that's what we're, we're doing right now. If you've ever heard of uh, Snorty, essentially what that is is a mobile-based uh, um, application that you can use to monitor your snort devices, you know, obviously anywhere in the world. And so we're implementing that on the, the uh, next. What this originally started out was an open source thing. Of course, I'm a fan of OWASP, and I teach all my students about OWASP and, and the free tools, and we do a lot of fun stuff with it. But it, it turned into a business. And the reason I put mod security was just, you know what, I'm gonna throw another uh, uh, software device on there. and. Obviously, these aren't web applications, although I guess you need Apache 2 on Nagios. But, uh, and, and so I thought, well, since I've got Apache on there, and I didn't modify it so that it wasn't talking to the outside, uh, we'll just put mod security on there and see if that runs, and just put a lot of inter infrastructure monitoring devices on the Q-Box. Q is, I don't know if you, how you spell it in, in Germany, Germany, but uh, Q-U-E-U-E, that's what I mean by Q-Box. That's how that goes. So significance, very small, extremely low power consumption, open source. You can put whatever tools you want on there. Um, you partition the, the RAM. You convert to a RISC CPU. And then obviously you can have simultaneous infrastructure or other types of applications on there. So there's some other modifications that we recently made to it. Oh, I've got them up here. I'll show you in a second. Um, Etherwake, WOL, right? Uh, type VNC, but we're doing it with that. Type VNC, I think, just uses a password, so we installed um, SSH with a certificate um, to make it a little bit more tight than just Type VNC. Uh, Clam AV, and of course the MAP suite. And the reason we added the MAP suite on there was to, because like I said, we have, we put nconf on there, and you, with, using the nmap suite, you get more of a, a infrastructure look, and then you uh, uh, load that using that, uh, that Nagios GUI uh, to Nagios, and you get a much better uh, look at your environment. 
and I already said that. HBox, H of course stands for hacking, it says HackerBox. Same things, only we added Bluetooth capacity to it. Um, it's, uh, it's been pretty successful, we've used it in corporations, and uh, um, it's, well, like I said, it turned into a business unexpectedly. Here's the tools, I bet that's probably hard to see, but uh, um, there's your Metasploit, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. And I could have kept loading things, and they all work. Um, but uh, uh, these are all the tools that I've put on this device, that we have put on this device. And it's, uh, it's a successful hacking tool in one little box. The reason I like this is because when I was an executive consultant, I used to have to go around to corporations and perform penetration testing. And so what I did was uh, I would enter a corporation, you can just imagine a Fortune 100, Fortune 10, Fortune 20 company. You go in there, they don't allow you to bring your laptop in. What am I gonna do? Can I at least add burp to the uh, laptop that you provided me is something I might say. Like, nope, you can't do that. So what did you hire me for? Well, we hired you to test our systems. Well, if I can't use my own laptop and you aren't allowing me to add anything to your laptop, then this is gonna take a real long time because I'm just gonna be doing one-off hacks. Ah, that's okay. We just want a checkbox for our SAS 70 report. Oh, I see what this is about. Okay, that's fine. Let's do it. Well, instead of having to do that today, you know, this HBox, I can just plug into the laptop and all the tools that are in there, in their laptop, in fact. And all of the tools that are in there are at my disposal. So I'm not adding anything to their laptop anymore. I'm using everything on this. The only thing I get on their laptop is results. So now we've got a way, using a Raspberry Pi or, or an ultra small form factor box, to uh, um, do some fun hacking, which we couldn't do before, instead of doing the one-off hacks like we used to have to do. By the way, in Germany, has, do you have that same problem when any consultants, when you go in corporations, do you find that they don't allow you to bring in your laptop? I'm not sure because it's very, it's the same, yeah. Gosh, I don't know why they do that. It's very frustrating. Okay, so, what I like about the Hackbox, sorry, the HBox, is it's very uh, good for internal testing. You know, there's regulations. We have, we have them in the, in the USA, and, and of course you have them here. There's regulations that uh, require you to uh, uh, do both internal and external testing, but when you do external testing, they wanna, want you to get a white hat or, or somebody like that, uh, a corporation like that, to do your, your testing, and that's fine. What I like about this is it's a great internal testing tool that's not going to cost you the, the tens of thousand dollars that, well, or more that uh, the IBM and HP and, and the other tools, although they're, I'm sure they're very good and I've certainly used them, this is a much better uh, uh, cost effective way. So now you can do your web attacks, now you can do your, your network attacks, you do Wi Fi, Bluetooth, you can do everything. And just, uh, um, oh, what we recently did is we uh, uh, attached it to a Class V network and uh, um, we utilized the uh, uh, wireless IP um, of the uh, laptop and put that in promis promiscuous mode and then used our tools to just uh, essentially hook into the, the wireless capability of the laptop at that corporation and, uh, um, you know, hack away. So there's a couple other things that we're doing. All right, I don't know if you've used Nova for a honeypot, a honey pea. Yeah, yeah, good. Man, it's awesome. This thing is great. It's very hard to detect, even by some of the major brands of, of, of IDSs that are out there. Um, when you put Nova into a, uh, a honeypot, um, it's, it's very stealth. It's great. It hides. Uh, I, really, I really enjoy that. So um, another thing to do with a, a Raspberry Pi 
is to make a honeypot server using, of course, open source applications. Any uh, mathematicians in here? Okay. Um, anybody look at that? Maybe any guesses what that might be? Oh, come on. This is a class on Raspberry Pi, so that might be Pi. Very good. Very good. Yeah, this is Pi. Um, that is the uh, that's the algorithm that is well the formula that is used to uh, uh, find Pi to the last digit. And I don't know if you've read some of the stories about uh, people that are, what do you call it, uh, um, attaching Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi, and they're making the, uh, I forget what Beowulf, it's called Beowulf. Uh, essentially, uh, a lot of people have done this, and so what, they, what they're making is a supercomputer. And you can get to the point, and I think with my modifications, and then in the next year, this is what I want to do, uh, either by myself or with some students, is then use the Raspberry Pi Beowulf construction and uh, uh, evaluate Pi to the farthest digit that has been found. So last year, um, a, a professor in the United States got it to the last digit, and I couldn't tell you what power that was too. I'm sure it was in the tens of thousands, but uh, um, you can do some significant processing power by boosting the RAM and by boosting the uh, 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 capacity of, of just these little Raspberry Pi boxes and uh, uh, using those modifications that I had. Uh, okay. Hello? Okay. Um, I, as I told you, I'm a professor, so my intention of uh, uh, coming here today was to show you a couple different tools, that, well, three actually tools that you've never seen. Um, I couldn't take those across from the United States. So um, it's bad to, to bring certain tools overseas or cross borders with it. So I apologize about that. Now, if you want to guess what those tools are, I will, I will tell you. Um, one is kind of like a, sounds like a city in Arizona. Any guesses? Any cities in Arizona you know? Yeah. Phoenix Exploit Kit, right? So I wanted, I figured you guys had never seen it. And since I'm a researcher, I, I don't know how professors are here, but uh, in the United States, we get to do research from the uh, perspective that, oh, that person's a professor in cybersecurity will allow them to do research on, on the black hole or on the phoenix. And I was going to do that. And I thought this would have been a great experience. But I wasn't allowed to bring those across borders. So I am not going to show that. Um, and the other one is a, is a really uh, neat exploit that uh, happens on firewalls. And, and uh, it's pretty intense. So I just decided not to do that one. Um, let me, uh, but I took a few screenshots. Just to let you know of uh, some of the things that I've been doing here. So essentially, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, um, so this is the impl implementation of the Q box, and what we have here is uh, um, RPI NY one, two, and three. These are uh, implementations of different uh, uh, cue boxes that I brought along to, uh, um, to show you. Now, unfortunately, I'm having power problems over here with the conversion on my boxes, so I, I couldn't show you that. But uh, um, I did get one working. And just to basically show you uh, that there are um, things on there, just to Hold on. So um, essentially, what you've got is a tool with a, t a ton of hacking devices in there. Now, unfortunately, I, I didn't get everything working as exactly as I would prefer. And I didn't want to show these anyway. I wanted to do the exploit kits. But uh, um, everything that you're already doing 
um, for your penetration testing can be done with uh, uh, these devices. Now, um, what I want to do now is uh, open it up for questions a little bit earlier than I had preferred. Again, my apologies for not being able to show you the exploit kits. Um, so, any questions, or I'll ask you a question, you can answer it. So, anybody have any questions? Okay. Has anybody, oh, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, okay, so he, he wants. So can you elaborate on the conversion thing about the GPU to a RIS CPU, how to integrate it into the OS stack or what's going on there? Okay. Well, um, so the, the GPU to RIS CPU implementation was a, well, frankly, it was about a 40-hour um, implementation that it took, okay? And, uh, um, to elaborate on it would be to show you how to do it, and I don't really have the time to do it, but, it's, but essentially what, what we wanted to do was take the existing power, uh, utilize, uh, uh, well, for, for instance, for the Q-Box, our original idea was you don't need to have the HDMI port, but there is a way to wire that capacity back into the processing. So maybe I can give you a visual that way. And if you can do that, then uh, uh, you can utilize the HDMI capacity to boost the uh, uh, processing output of the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi box. So it, it took a lot of effort, but uh, um, there are certain modifications that you can do with the existing hardware that's already on there. And so, yeah, it is a hardware hack, yeah. Well, it's, since it's no longer open source, it's not documented to, to provide. I wish I could. So, sorry, thank you. I'm next in. Has anybody used Raspberry Pi for uh, anything other than games? Are you, is anybody using it in their infrastructures? Oh, good. Tell me an example. Hold on a second, he's gonna get you the microphone. Is it working? Okay. I have installed Kali Linux and uh, doing penetration testing. Yeah, Kali Linux, that's a great implementation. Yeah, well, I love Kali Linux. They, they have a list for Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Kali Linux is great anyway, but uh, um, yep, very good. Anybody else used a, an implementation of Raspberry Pi that's Unique, maybe not necessarily for your business, but unique. <laughs> Hello, playing around and making some stuff like uh, wireless printers mm -hmm. go on with the, with the uh, mobiles and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that. Uh, um, What was our professor's name in the, in the uh, oh gosh, Chris, Chris Bulkerman? Yeah, he's, he's in his PhD thesis, he's using it to uh, do some uh, uh, IPTV um, analytics. And uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, original. Yes. Yeah, so we are doing a ticket system with it. So Raspberry Pi, Pi and uh, NFC Shield from Adafruit. For example, that's my prototype of uh, what to use Raspberry Pi for. So just hook that up, uh, hook that up uh, on the network and you have one uh, well, pretty cheap reader which you can integrate to your backend and uh, like show if the user is uh, allowed to do, uh, go, go to a conference or, or something like that. Okay. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, very good, excellent. Um, even though um, the fellow that asked the question about the risk CPU even though it's not open source, I can probably share you some more information later. Please get my, my uh, business card from me. Um, that was an original idea. Anybody else?
Martin, wie geht's? Ja. Um, I have a very quite simple question, but important for me. How is it powered? Can it like is it autonomous, or you have to be close to a power supply to make it run? No. Just to make sure if we can run like ephemeral networks or ephemeral services that will move around with us, this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, well, it was made to be portable. So the the idea for for Nagios was not was not necessarily portable, but to be able to uh, put it into many different environments, for instance, uh, uh, remote offices and what have you, that people are VPNing through their own PC at home or whatever it is, and there's no uh, monitoring there. And yet, if they're doing corporate work, what we've done, and, and we have a, an implementation at the end of this month for, for 97 uh, uh, cue boxes, is we, um, we are going to uh, uh, put those in not only in their home office, but also in the remote offices, so that now their administrators have access to it. Now the hacking box can be designed, you know, you can put it in a server rack, but, Antonio, uh, uh, but uh, um, you can also plug it right into your laptop via USB. So you don't have to power it through uh, uh, this uh, extension cord like, uh, like I've got here. Yeah, USB is absolutely enough, and and in fact, that's that was the the design framework around it. The HBox was to make sure that it can be portable, and you can take it with you. Yeah. Sure, you can use a battery pack just like iPhone, right? Mm-hmm. That's a good question, Antonio. How do you do, do? How do you adapt it to use power over Ethernet? Um, haven't done that. How would you do it? Creatively. <laughs> On the top of my head, um, it can be done. Absolutely. Um, I don't know because I haven't done it yet. So when I do that now, I'll give you credit for it. Yeah. That's true. You can use an adapter, right? You just use a power over Ethernet adapter. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a modification that you got to do. And since I haven't implemented it, I'm not sure how, what that would do to the little tiny Raspberry Pi box. <laughs> it might melt it. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. All right. Sorry. Yeah, come up here and see it if you want. This is the H box, and my uh, in my left hand I have the Q box. In my right hand I have the H box. Yeah, these are the boxes right here, and you know it's it's exactly what you would think. Um, there's your little Raspberry Pi, and uh, uh, we've uh, uh, formed a, a 3D print around it, and uh, put it together and it's been very successful. And please come up here and take a look at it, and I'll leave the lid off this one so you guys can take a look inside. Um, yeah, absolutely. Any other questions that I can help you with, or answer, or you can help me with? Okay. Well, I beg your pardon? Well, um, that is programmatic. So, um, a, as in, you develop it in there uh, to, to program it. But actually, there is a tool in uh, uh, Raspberry Pi that allows you to mess with the swap file. So it's not only um, it's not only uh, creatively messing with the swap file. So essentially, with with regular PCs. The uh, uh, swap file, I think, mm -hmm. is two times, but you can make it greater than that um, using our implementation. That's a good question. How 
Well, they're still running now, and they've been running for four months now, so I'm not really quite sure. Um, but obviously, with this one, you know, it's, it's going to be unplugged very often. With the Q-Box, um, they've been running for months now, so um, there's not been an issue with it at all. That's a very good question. Um, and we've not run into any issues with it yet. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and I hope next time I can show you Phoenix Exploit Kids. Okay.